Can I just ask her, uh, Sir Curtly? I go make sure I say Sir Curtly. Uh, that like, I just look at the way you play the game. You're a six foot eight bowler, steepling bounce, probably bowled around one forty k's an hour faster on average, and you so, you you have an okay relationship with the game. You could take it or leave it. Basically, in fact, you said that to Steve War. We'll come to that later. But uh, do you ever look at sort of medium paces in the UK who are sort of five foot eight and just think, why are you even playing? <laughs> you know, I mean, you see, because you see, my pride. You know, apart from my skills as a bowler, you know, my pride played a huge role because I'm a very, very proud man, mm. and anything I do, I always try to be the best at it. So my pride was my driving force. I never wanted to be a weak link in any team. Because I remember when I joined the West Indies, the West Indies team first in 1988, you know, we had the late great Malcolm Marshall, who was probably the best bowler in the world at the time. You have Courtney Walsh, my great friend. You know, so I always figured I was forced to learn very quickly. Because in the back of my mind, I didn't want opposition teams to be saying, you know what? Let's see off Michael Marshall, see off Courtney Walsh, mm. and beat up on Kurt Ambrose, the rookie. I never wanted that. <laughs> so I was forced to learn quickly so I could be at least up close behind Marshall and Walsh. You know, so my pride, I believe, apart from my skills, my pride played a huge role. Were you, were you immediately, you must have been immediately good because like in, in 1986, you had the, you had the dream of any club cricketer to go and play, you know, club cricket in the UK first, first, you know, overseas uh, venture for, for playing cricket. And you playing in the Liverpool competition for, is it Chester Borton CC? Is that, is that, is that the name of the club? Yes. Yes, and, that's correct. Chester Borton Hall. Yes. And I you took, went you took 84 it, wickets it, at nine. <laughs> <laughs> pitch many I up. Went over there, I went over there. <laughs> And a Sir Viv Richards cricket scholarship. Uh, yes, uh, yes. In 1986, the year before that, in 85, my good friend and former schoolmate and teammate Winston Benjamin, he went over the year before me and he got a, he got over 100 wickets. Okay, right. You know, so yeah. when I went in 86, I got 84, <laughs> and up to this very day, he never forget that. You know, <laughs> always keep reminding me that I, I fell short. <laughs> you know? and then I did pretty well, and then. The following year, in 1987, I went into to play for a team called um, oh, a team. The name escaped me. But he come back to me in 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 a, in, in a Lancashire, the Central Lancashire League, Haywood. That's mm. the name of the club. Mm. I went to play for a team called Haywood. Haywood. And I took 115 wickets. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, to me, that was enough to win the championship, right? It was enough. Yeah, it was enough. <laughs> well, well, wrong. We came mid-table. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> so he figured 115 weeks, that's enough to win it. We came mid table, we even close. Yeah. You know, and then after that, I got a contract to play for Northamptonshire in 88. Hmm. But, but then I was selected for West Indies team the same year hmm. against Pakistan for the home series, and then we toured England that very same year in 88. So my county, my county cricket started in 1989. Hmm. So my career basically took off, I mean, just. Overnight. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. 